So I've had a few people ask me uh, when I've been posting pictures of my setups on forums and Reddit where I get my enclosures from. And the answer is actually that I make these myself and I've found it to be a really cheap and creative way to kind of make something specific to whatever creature it is that you're keeping inside these. So I just thought I'd sort of run through the process of what I do to create these and what materials I'm using. And then if you're willing to put the time in and feeling a bit creative, you can give it a go yourself. The reason I started making these was because I don't really like the standard kind of exoterra setup. It's a bit plasticky and they're not really the right size for what I keep, which is primarily praying mantis. But at the same time, I did want something glass and a lot of the mantis specific enclosures you get are made of acrylic. And my experience of acrylic is it's very easy to warp and it's not very easy to clean. It scratches a lot easier. So I really wanted something glass, the right size that's appropriate for my mantids. And that's why I build these. They've got plenty of ventilation at the front and on the top. It's front opening, so it's easier to clean and access. It's also got a sliding top, so you can get in from the top if you need to. And I've also kind of custom built a little netting piece there for the guys to cling onto if they want to. That's kind of optional. You can just have a plain glass panel in there. But the total to make this enclosure is probably under 10 pounds which is obviously way cheaper than the Exoterra stuff you can buy, a lot more durable and it's creature specific. I looked into buying custom cut glass to size for these, but it's actually really expensive to get. And I found the cheapest alternative is to actually buy these glass clip frames, which are just for decoration, for putting pictures in and stuff, but you can, they come with a two millimeter thick pane of glass. So I actually buy these, which are about a pound each online and chuck away the rest of it, keep the pane of glass and then cut the glass to size here. I've recently just done another order of these because I wanted to make some new enclosures and thought it'd be a good opportunity to talk people through just how I do that. This is just my way of doing it. I'm sure there's better ways. Uh, maybe you'll get a few tips. It does take a bit of time, but if you enjoy the creative process of making these and want a cheap alternative, it's definitely worth having a go. Kind of new to doing these tutorial type videos for this kind of thing, but I'll do the best I can, hope it helps and enjoy. The starting point for me on these is always using a program to plan my build and get a blueprint of exactly how I want it to look. This will make it a lot easier when it comes to understanding how all the pieces are gonna to fit together and the exact measurements that you're gonna to need to make your enclosure. I use an application called Google SketchUp. There is a free version which will do everything you need it to do. And it lets you design your own builds and you can save them for the future too if you want to recreate anything. So once you've unpacked your glass, the first thing you want to do is just mark out your measurements for what size you want your glass to be. We can then score it and snap it to size. Just make sure that whatever pen you use, you can just wipe off because you don't want it to permanently stain the glass. I got this rollable glass cutter from Amazon for fairly cheap, which does the job. You just need to lubricate it up. I've just used vegetable oil here. I'm not even sure why you have to do it, but from videos I saw about glass cutting, it's kind of the done thing. So just make sure that you're getting that tip nice and lubed, which is always good advice, not just in enclosure building. I'm using a metal ruler here just as a guide, and I've just stuck a few bits of blue tack on the bottom to hold it in place because you're gonna be kind of pushing against the ruler when you score the glass, so you don't want it to move, and that should keep it nice and secure and then run the roller up and down a few times just to spread the lube across the line you're going to cut. And then apply pressure fairly firmly. It might take a few attempts to get this right. You'll know when you've got it because the sound of the glass being scored sounds like sizzling bacon, something cooking in a pan. When you hear it, you'll know what I mean. I've made a rookie error here as well. Please make sure you wear gloves because this glass can be incredibly sharp and I'm an idiot for not having them on while I'm doing this video. But just make sure you wear them because you can never be too careful when you're working around this kind of stuff. It is incredibly sharp. Sometimes the glass will break just with a little tiny tap. But just to be sure, what I would do is give it a little bang all along the line you've just scored, which will create micro cracks. And then it'll just take a little bonk and it should snap I 
Once you're done with the piece or pieces you want to cut to size, just make sure you mark them to say what they are, because you don't want to get them mixed up. I've done that before and it's just a big waste of time. Then you should have all the basics of the enclosure, the top, the door, the side panels, the bottom and the back pieces. So as these edges are so sharp, the next part is we're going to sand them down. And as you can see, I've got my gloves on now, like a good boy. Just a word of warning, make sure you're doing this in a ventilated space. And I would even wear a mask as well, because you do not want to be breathing in these little fibres of glass that are coming off here when you're sanding it down. It doesn't take a lot. I tend to use a coarse grade on the first once over and then a finer grade sandpaper just to give it a nice smoother finish. You should wet the sandpaper down as well, which will just help capture any of the glass dust that's coming off there. We've now got a basic template for the enclosure. The next thing I do is mask around the edges, and this will just help give a defined line when we apply the silicone. It just looks a lot neater, as you will see in due course. So I just stick it around a centimetre away from the edges, and then use a scalpel just to neaten it up and make defined squares. Now we can apply the silicone. We'll start off attaching the back and one of the side panels. Just be sure to refer to your blueprint because you're going to want to know whether, for example, the back needs to go on top of the bottom or to the side of the bottom if that makes sense because those few millimeters are going to make all the difference once this all comes together so that's kind of important and that's a mistake i've made in the past once these three panels are attached everything's still fairly malleable so that will be your opportunity to make sure everything's lined up nice and perfect and that all your edges are flush And then you can silicone on the next panel. Once you're happy with how everything's looking, I would probably suggest to leave it overnight to set as it is for now, before we go on to the next step, which is going to be adding silicone into all the corners just to make sure everything's secure and watertight, because that will eliminate any risk of any panels getting moved or anything like that when we go through the next silicone application. And then once it's all dry, we can start lathering silicone across all of these corners. And you can just use your finger to swipe across the corners, smooth out the silicone up to the edge of the masking tape. Once that's done, before the silicone cures, we're going to peel off the masking tape and that should leave behind a nice smooth line there and give a great finish on the panels for the tank. It's a bit messy and you'll probably get daubs of silicone on the panels and things like that. Don't worry too much because we can clean that off at a later stage. So the front ventilation panel is going to have to be made from acrylic because I'm not confident to drill holes in glass. You can score and snap this yourself, similarly to how you've done the glass, but it's a bit more difficult to snap and I just find it easier to purchase these pre-cut to size, especially if I'm doing lots of tanks at once. And as you can probably see, I've already pre-marked where I want my ventilation holes to go, which will now move on to drilling. Drilling these acrylic holes can be a bit of a pain. I've had it several times where it's ended up cracking and then I have to redo it. I've found the safest way is to drill a pilot hole with a very thin drill bit and then you can go back through it again with a slightly thicker one to the hole size appropriate for your tank. As you can see here, I've kind of stacked up four or five panels to do them all at once. It's a little bit more risky, but it just saves time. You don't want to drill too fast on these either because the acrylic will melt onto the drill bit and then it's a massive pain to get off. But once you're done, you can peel off the protective layer on the acrylic, which is very satisfying, and then remove any burrs 
from the edges of the holes and you should have something that looks a bit like this. We can now attach that front panel which is pretty much the same way we've done things before. Uh, mask off the edges, apply the silicone. You can do this at the same time as when you put the other bits together if you want, it's just that my acrylic didn't arrive until a day later is the only reason I've done it in this order. So once you're confident that all the silicon is nice and dry we can then move on to attaching the front panel door and the way I do this is I buy some metal one inch hinges and I attach this with JB Weld epoxy which is super strong so there shouldn't be any risk of anything snapping off or breaking off. When you attach the hinge at the top just make sure you're leaving about an inch of space also because we are going to attach some runners onto this. Next up I'm going to make our sliding lid which will have a ventilation hole in the top and a mesh netting over it which should allow our mantids which are going to be going in this enclosure to hang from. There's still ventilation even without this so if it's not a mantid you're keeping in here you might not need to worry about this step in which case you can just leave it intact as a sliding panel. It's largely the same as what we've done before. It's just an inch off the sides and about a half inch at the top and we're pretty much just cutting a hole out of the middle. Once again you will just have to painstakingly sand the edges down just as a precaution because when you're sliding this in and out you don't want to get any cuts on you from any sharp edges. And once that's complete I just add a few dabs of silicone on the edges just to give it a bit of structure when I push it together. It doesn't have to be perfect, it's not a very strong hold as it is but we're going to reinforce that shortly. I smooth out some silicone along the edge of the square and then attach a cut to size piece of netting over this which will be suitable for the mantid to grip onto if he wants to go to the top of the enclosure and hang out for a while. So more glass cutting, we need some little strips cut to size which we're going to use as our reinforcement for that top sliding layer. So once again cut the glass, sand it down, be careful, wear gloves, wear a mask, don't do it naked and then we'll use silicone to place those strips that will cover over the joins on the top panel and that will reinforce this and stop it moving around or potentially breaking. Here's one without the reinforcements that I've been using and as you can see it's quite flimsy. It's okay, it works, but I just don't like how flimsy it is. With the sliding lid completed we can then pop it on top of the enclosure and line everything up just so we know where the top ventilation panel is going to go. It's just important to line this all up correctly because we don't want any gaps. Then you can silicon along the edge and attach the top ventilation panel that we drilled earlier. There's an additional step here that you don't have to do but I just do it as a bit of extra security. I cut some glass strips out and attach them near the top just to give a little bit of more surface area for the top lid to sit on. It just minimises the risk of the top lid dropping down when you're sliding it out. For the locking mechanism I've attached a magnet to the outside of the hinge and then what we're going to do is put another magnet on the inside of the glass door and then once that hinge is attached to the side panel it will keep that door nice and secure and it's easy enough to open up as well when you need to. Hard to explain but you'll see what I mean once it's completed and again all these attachments I've used the JB Weld epoxy for a really strong bond and you can see on there I've just attached a little knob to get some purchase on it when you want to open the door. I just bought those off Amazon. Remember to delete your search history though because you don't want your partner to see that you've been searching for tiny knobs. Whilst that's all drying we're going to attach some runners to the top of the tank and I use these plastic corner frames which you can find on eBay and Amazon and then cut those to size, sand off the edges just to neaten it all up and we can attach those with silicone which will hold our top sliding lid in place. 
And then to attach the secondary magnet to the door, just pop the epoxy on the magnet. You can reach into the top of the tank, get the magnet in place and it will snap to the hinge. Then it's just a case of waiting for that to dry. And that is your tank pretty much complete. The last thing that I do is just neaten everything up. I give it a wipe down with isopropyl alcohol and use a razor scraper just to remove any stray bits of silicone that are attached to the glass. Once that's done, it's just important to get all the chemicals off. So I wash it all down with water and spray all in the inside and that gives you a chance as well to check for any potential leaks, make sure there's no gaps anywhere. And then I wipe it down and buff it all with a microfiber cloth. It should leave the glass really pristine and have a nice neat finish to it. So that's my process start to finish. I hope you got some kind of tips or hints from that on your future builds. If you think there's something I could be doing better, by all means, leave a comment, let me know. I'll be sure to read it and get back to you. But as always, thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. Take care and I'll see you on the next one.